Love a guy so good he leave his home in glory For the world he loved, for the world that he so loved And it's not just a story Morning, everyone. We're just going to pray. Father, this morning afresh, we come into thy presence and we just pull down all strongholds. Father, prepare people's hearts. Open their minds and understanding. Give them an open ear, Father. And we pray this morning that those who will be listening will be able to receive the revelation of God's word. And Father, just from this, this morning's meeting might be a life-changing for everyone that's listening. And we, Jesus could say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus could say this, and the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach, and we thank you for it. We had a few hiccups there this morning. And uh, so we're going to have a great meeting. I remember I come in here this morning, and I think in my mind was Jim Reeves. This world is not my home. Born again Christian, this world is not your home. Everybody is wanting this world and you no know, I I I never heard Jim Reeves or not years ago when I was a young boy I used to play the lot of Jim Reeves. I'm just a passing through. I'm just passing through and not you're passing through. But we are hear this. Years ago in my own life I heard God calling me 
and uh, and I thought to myself, well, I have to do some. And then I didn't realise there's such a thing in this morning go to, but preparation time. And the majority of us doesn't don't want to go into a preparation mode, but you don't realise this even before you're saved. God has been preparing you and me. And um, prepare for promotion. And uh, see this morning, over all the weeks I've been trying to tell you things, but we hear this. When I started to see that God had a call in my life and everything, the call had not come. I knew inside myself that the Lord had called me. But he didn't tell me when I was going to do it. And I started to see in my own heart, and I look back now, there was qualities in my life before I was called. What, am I, what did I say there? There's qualities in my life before I heard the call of God. I'm going to try and bring this across. If you know us here, see today... We don't realise this, but the message the church is hearing is not the apostolic teaching message that God meant the church to hear. If it is, it's watered down, and it's watered down to taste into the world system the way things is going. But I'm going to show you what, what do you need. What do you? What's the qualities you need? Okay, then. I'll I'll go to the second one first. See if you go and some of you have the passion there. Go you to Luke chapter 16. See, when I went to work, and after I served my time, I went to work to different people. And we here, I'm going to say here, every one of them jobs, I end up for one that I went to. Now tell me, can I ask you a question? Why did somebody put me into the role of a foreman? And in them places there may be six or eight or ten people to look over. But I was supposed to do my own job and look over them at the same time, according to the bosses as they're telling me. But we look you look chapter sixteen. Now see this is the passion. The one who manages the little he has been given with faithfulness and integrity will be promoted. Who will be promoted? The one who manages the little he has been given. Luke chapter 16, verse 10 to 12. Oh, this is my third time. The one who manages the little he has been given with faithfulness and integrity will be promoted. Listen, majority is not even looking at that. It's the same in God's kingdom. God's looking this morning for faithfulness. And that might be a quality you even had before you were saved. What's the world looking for? Elegance of speech. People are able to motivate people, motivate people and get things to happen. Numbers in churches and delegate promotion to people and push them into service. What's God looking for? The one who manages the little he has been given, that could, that could be you at home, mind your children. That could you be you in any of your jobs. The one who manages the little he has been given with faithfulness and integrity will be promoted and trust it with greater responsibility. Can I ask you a question? What are we going or what way have we been programmed? Are we thinking to get promotion? Here's the here's the here's the key main key. Faithfulness with level. Same with the revelation of God. If God starts to show you the revelation of his word, are you faithful to that revelation? If you're faithful to that revelation, God will give you more. You know us here, I'll read the next wee bit. He has been given with faithfulness and integrity will be promoted and trusted with God. But the, those who cheat with a little they have been given will not be considered trustworthy to receive more. Look, I'll give you an example. 
and only can speak for his own life. Them people must have seen something on me and they promoted me to be foreman. And then I was accountable to go and see if I seen some, doing something wrong. And I would have walked up to him and I said to him, Hold on, let's call his name Trevor. Trevor, you're doing that wrong, sir. I'm here to show you how to do it. Now, I might get a mouthful, but wait till this. What was I doing? I wasn't prepared to let him make a hash of it. With me knowing I could help him to do it right. And it's the same today. Most of say, ah, slap it up. So he should ask me. No, you should see it's going wrong and you should walk over and say. What, what, what's that? I'm, do, I'm not doing a very good job at the minute. Right, we the next wee bit. I'll go back to that. If you have not handled the, the riches of this world with integrity, why should you be trusted with the eternal true riches of the spiritual world? So God's looking to see how you are handling your money. To know that here's one here I can put all the spiritual things of this world, next life and everything into his hands. Because he is going to be faithful with that. Just like he's faithful with his money. So there's a quality here God's looking for. We, the church, don't do that today. We promote and we set up systems and different things and we're looking for these motivational speakers to go forth and speak things I think the Lord has called you to this you go forth and do this not looking for the quality that God's looking for tell me this see today God has divine order set up and God wants the church to come back to divine order and follow his divine order and God's looking someone and everyone even on tonight or in this message God's looking to see if your heart, if he can trust you with his message. Do for the people. See, see this here. Take time out and read this. i read this segment again. If you've not handled the riches of the world, now if you haven't done that, here from this moment on, let God instill in you, say, well I am from this moment on, I'm going to handle the riches of this world with integrity so here's preparation time I'm going to change I'm going to change to a different mindset what's this if you've not handled the riches of this world with integrity why should you be trusted with the eternal riches of the spiritual world for example if you give somebody a certain job to do and they make a complete hash of it would you trust them with a bigger responsibility no but listen I am not here I'm just trying to show you this Right, wait a minute. Next one. Now, if you've not been f- proven faithful with what belongs to another, all I'm just saying to you is, I've seen from them jobs, and all I can look back in my own life, even before I was saved, I was, this verse especially here, I worked to a man and he had a body shop, and all these people were working in the body shop. Then every so often he'd say to me, could you do me a favour, could you take t- my two children and take them to such and such and such and such? So I had to go and take his mother and take the two children. Sorry, his granny, the granny of the children. But I didn't realise this is what was going on here. And if you have not been proven faithful what belongs to another, why should you be given the wealth of your own? So you might not realise this, but we haven't been shown how long these are qualities God wants to look in every one of us. And these are qualities that God is looking for to promote you. But we're, we're promoting people just for our ends and our ends. And we'll tell you this, this is very, next verse. It's impossible for a person to serve two masters at the same time. Verse 13, Luke 16, Passion. You'll be forced to love one and reject the other. One, must, one master must be, will be despised and another will not have your loyal devotion. It is no different with God and the wealth of this world. You must enthusiastically love one another, one, and de- defend it, definitively reject the other. <clears throat> Years ago I seen, and I put myself into a mode of preparation for a common day God's promotion. 
and he was here for years and years before the Lord had called me maybe to speak, I would have studied. And if I look back, you can get into things and you'll see all these sheets of paper where I wrote notes and all. And when I depart, somebody can have the job and get through all the stuff. But I had realised and I felt the call of God in my life and I prepared and God showed, started to lead and guide me and I started to write it all down before I had the platform to speak. And all I'm just saying today, where you're at today, you start preparing yourself for promotion, for the ministry God has for you. Okay? Now, see what I'm saying here is, we're going to take a wee phrase today. I heard a thing years ago. And the devil, and this wee demon come up to the devil and he says, tell me this, can I take that tool of yours there? No, 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 no. You can have every other tool, but whatever you do, don't take that one. That's my greatest tool. And the wee demon, he says to the devil, he says, what do you mean it's the greatest tool? I say, what's that tool? That tool is a word called, it's discouragement. That's my greatest tool. And we're living in an age, and there's a spirit of age as people are getting so discouraged. And we see this morning, you need not discouragement, you need encouragement. Okay then. And you need to see what God has everything set out for you to be encouraged and enriched. To f- Listen, in a preparation time, God's going to promote you. And i seen that. And I didn't realise that them things that I was doing, even in the secular world, one of them I was doing, but one of them I wasn't doing. And i seen that God wanted me to change. And all I'm just saying to you is, I started to look after my money. Because God started to show me this. There's three things in here in these verses. Luke 16, verse 10. And you must hear in all honesty, I'm maybe talking to somebody this morning who's maybe lost all their money. And done business and lost all their money. And you must hear, change round. I know people who've lost all their houses and all their things. Change round. And start to realise, hold on a minute. Listen, if I was telling you honestly in my heart, God's message has not been preserved. And I could show you this morning things. Why it hasn't been preserved? Because we have changed the programme. And instead of preserving God's message, we have followed a programme of following numbers and building AA churches up with numbers. And that has brought the decline of the church age. Now, we don't want to put our hand up and own responsibility. But if you go to 1 Timothy 1 verse 4, 1 Timothy 1 verse 4. There's a powerful verse on here that says this here. Now this just hasn't happened this last 5 years or 10 years. It can maybe happen 50, 60 years ago. It started to move after the Second World War. 1 Timothy 4 verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter day, latter times, some will depart from a thing called the faith. If you read, read 1 Timothy 4 verse 1, A.V. In the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to the just spirit and doctrines, and different doctrines come on. And the two words in that, some shall depart from the faith, and the faith is the apostolic teaching handed down to the church. But God's looking this morning us to have a fully committed heart and faithfulness to carry forth the faith. Now that's what that last last times, but that's what has happened. The Spirit speaks that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Now we, the church, have moved away from the apostolic teaching of the church age called the faith. Now that just hasn't happened overnight. But I just want to show you that verse. And the reason why we've departed, we are not faithful to the right message. 
right? Now I just want to show you this a wee, a wee wee second just to see this. What do you need for being able to do this? Well, I've been telling you this last few while you need a fully committed heart. That starts off with a good, and here's the problem. An open heart, and that open heart must be faithful to listen to what the Spirit of God tells you and the seven sevenfold Spirit starts to show you. And that's why, that's why we'll not get this, because our, our heart is not open to listen to the sevenfold Spirit, what he wants to tell you. But if you and I have a faithful heart, the next quality God wants to see is faithfulness. And now you have stepped onto the ladder. If you follow, and you've stepped onto a thing called promotion, to follow and fellowship with God in your journey. Right, what's the qualities? Fully committed heart. Faithfulness. And that's all God's looking for. You to be faithful in little. And you don't realise this, maybe or maybe don't realise this. God's been looking at your life. And he maybe sees this morning them qualities in a lot of us this morning. And now he's going to search you out. And he's going to bring promotion about in your life. I just want to show you this. I read them out of Luke 16. I'm going to read them again now. Just DC verse in a row. Luke 16 verse 10, 11 and 12. I'm going to read them out of them. I'm going to read them out of the Passion. Maybe a lot of people don't read it, but if you, whatever Bible you want to read, you read it. Luke chapter 16. What's the qualities wanting? You need this fully committed heart. And now God wants to produce in this in you faithfulness. And you don't realise this, but that's why people get promoted in more jobs and works. Because of faithfulness. Luke chapter 16. And even at home, faithful your children, faithful your money, faithful other things. Luke chapter 16, uh, verse 10. The one who manages the little he has been given with faithfulness and integrity will be promoted and trusted with greater responsibilities. But those who cheat with little they have had, have been given, will not be considered trustworthy to receive more. If you've not handled the riches of this world with integrity, why should you be trusted with the eternal riches of the spiritual world? Although you have blessed with all spiritual blessings, although in your spirit you have all things, you and I need this quality for to be able for this to manifest in your life. Now listen, some this morning will be feeling dejected because maybe they haven't been faithful in their areas. Please do not be discouraged from this moment on, be encouraged to ask God to bring them qualities into you. Next verse. I maybe have to go back. But those who cheat with little they have been given will be considered trustworthy to receive more. But those who have not, been, but those who who cheat with little they have been given will not be considered trustworthy to receive more. If you have not handled the riches of this world with integrity. Why should you be trusted with the eternal riches of the spiritual world? And if you have not been proven faithful with what belongs to another, why should you be given wealth of your own? It is, impos it is impossible for a person who ser to serve two matters, masters at the same time. Not doing a very good job of this. You'll be forced, you, you will be forced to love one and reject the other. The one master will be despised and the other will have your loyalty devotion. It is no different with God and the wealth of this world. You must enthusiastically love one and love one and despise or reject the other. We hear him going to say here. A lot of people would say you give all your money away. I think in all honesty, this God wants to see this morning there's nothing wrong with having money. As money has as long as money hasn't you. And God's looking for that fully committed heart. But then God wants to see this. A faithfulness for you to follow him. Now you are setting yourself off for God's promotion. Now watch this. That's the same verses there, but I just want to show you another thing. 
Right, I rip them out. I have a habit of writing these things out. So I've always done this and I get saved. I would take a sheet of paper and I'd see that I would always write it out. And then I'd see something as I'm writing out. I heard a thing years ago. If you listen this morning, you'll receive 10%. If you write it out as you're writing this out, you'll receive 38%. If God gives you a revelation and you get a revelation and you speak it out, you're walking 90% of it. And see this morning before I go on, what is God looking for? God's looking for a fully committed heart. The sevenfold spirit resting on you. And then he wants to instill the quality of faithfulness in you. Now, see the thing this morning. What I'm really talking about this morning is God wants faithful servants to take his message to the world and the church. Now, see, when you see this, I just want to show you these 10, 5 past 12. I'll always start a bit late. I want to show you a wee thing. There's such a thing in the, in the Bible called mysteries. Now, you'll get that in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. And God's looking this morning to see if he can find any of us who are faithful. And we hear what I'm going to do here. God's going to come and say, I want you to carry my mysteries. And I want you to go forth with my mysteries. And I want you to be faithful to teach my mysteries to my children. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 1. And I want to, after that, I want to talk about one mystery. I can talk about a whole pile of them, but I want to talk about one specific. Right, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Let a man so account of us as the minister of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. These men were the servants and stewards of God's mysteries. And the quality of these men was this. They had a fully committed heart. The sevenfold spirit was resting on them starting to give them revelation and they were found faithful. God put them into the ministry to teach his children and his body. I'll read this again. So let a man so count of us of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be f- or woman be found faithful. God does not instill his mysteries. He only instills them to those who are faithful. Paul was one of these men. Okay? That all makes sense there. That's why he was given this role. Because them qualities were in him. Romans, now listen, the world does, the secular world and the church does it different. They want to give you a role and a job. And then qualities don't have to be there. They just want to boost their agenda and bring in numbers and bring all these programs in. But God has another agenda here. God wants to take his people and lead his people with the right people to lead and guide and promoting and bringing everyone into this place. Now if you go to, I'm going to go back there, Romans chapter 1 verse 5. I'm just going to show you, and it's only in the AV now. And I remember years ago reading this about Paul. And for the first time in my life, I found why Paul was promoted. Nobody ever told me this. I'm one night I read this. And it says this here. And by the way, there was other ones on in these verses. By whom we have received grace and apostleship. Why, why did they receive grace and apostleship? Romans 1 verse 5. For the obedience to the faith. What were they obedient to? Well, the faith. That's that word there I was telling you about. The faith. The faith is the apostolic revelation given for the church for to follow. And we are supposed to be stewards of the apostolic teaching called the faith. And that's the one God will promote. And that's what's happened, the decline of the church. Read this again. Why was Paul promoted? He was given grace and apostleship for he was obedient to the faith. 
the apostolic teaching given to God for the church. Does that all make sense now? Now, now do you see why of the decline of the church? Because we have put in other people and other systems and other programs and we have replaced it and our main agenda is just numbers. And it doesn't really matter about the message so much. It's about numbers. It's about you having a good, nice life and social life and not everything else happening, good community, working on things, do things. Now, what's this? And I have to be careful what I'm saying here. Go back to, well, go back to, go to this first now. And I'm going to talk a wee, for the last wee minute or two on a thing called the faith. Now, I, I can show you at least 16 verses that says this. And they're all found mostly in the AV. The faith. So Paul was given grace and apostleship gift for the minister to the body of Christ because of obedience to the faith. So he's found faithful. So God put him in the role of faithfulness to take God's message to his people. And let's now read it. I'll read it again. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. I remember, I don't want to say his name or anything, but I remember people I've met in my role as I've walked on in the Christian life and all they wanted to do was come and take people away. One, two or three of them come here and all they want to do is take people away. And that's what we, we the church do. We take numbers and we take them. Where's the latest school? We're shifting here now and we're going here. But we're taking them from other churches. If you really want to go for God, just you start church and you let the Lord bring the people that he wants you to preach. And you let him open the door. You don't have to do anything. You let him do it. Well, it says, I'll read it again. First Corinthians 4 verse 1. Let a man so count of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Now, who did the next verse? But, but with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yet I judge not my own self, for I know nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby judged? I am justified, but he that judges me is the Lord. Paul was God's servant. Paul was judging no one. And Paul was saying in the coming day, God will judge me. And Paul didn't set himself up. Paul had qualities in him that God seen, and that's why God entrusted the message to him. And that's this morning. Then. The Lord's wanting our body of Christ to grow, to come back again into the role of the divine order that God has set up. Now watch this. I'm going to try and show you this. Right. Can I ask you a question? You go to church and you'll find out there's bishops or deacons or overseers. Why were they put, why were they put in that role? Why did church put them into that role? Well, I want to show you one of the qualities this morning why that person, even a deacon, why was the deacon there? There should be a quality here. There should be a quality found there. And it's found in, I'm going to read the verse now. 1 Timothy 3 verse 9. And you, you would hear me talk, and I, I, I want to tell you, I believe in the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in God's divine order. I believe in apostles who have been given the apostolic message to take to the body of Christ, to equip God's people. And if you go to 1 Timothy 3 verse 9, and you'll read one of these qualities that the deacon or overseer was to, to be found. I'm at the wrong page. 1 Peter 3 verse 9. Now I'll, I'll just go back a verse. And here's some of the other qualities, right? I go to verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desires the good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behaviour, given to hospitality, up to teach. Now, we would all we would all agree with all that stuff. I'm going down. Not given to wine, no striker, greedy or filthy looker, but patient. Not a brawler, no covets. One that rules well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. 
But if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride he fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of all them that are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Okay then. Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre. That's where, that's where we end it. Now we promote you. Next verse. Holding the mystery of the faith. What were the qualities they were to do? Holding A.V. the mysteries of the faith. So a hey, pastor's not here this morning. Right, Mr. Overseer, Bishop. Come up, you preach. Now preach the message of the faith. Preach the mystery of the faith. For you shouldn't be in that role unless you know the mystery of the faith. Is that what it says there? Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also be first proved. Then, them, you, then let them use the office of a deacon, being, being found blameless. What's the whole agenda here? So that God's message will be preserved. And God's people will, will be protected. And that God's program will be followed. Does that all make sense there? Right. These we are, I write down a wee thing here. These ministries and church are foundational for the holding of church's doctrine and godly order. This is foundational. So that God's church will be f- f- fundamentally in doctrine and in godly order. Now can I tell you this? We're not bringing Paul up here. We're bringing the bishop or whatever you call him, or the overseer, or the deacon up. Do you know the mystery of the faith? Can you teach and guide God's people? Now, if they haven't got that, can I tell you this, they need to sit back and learn it. But listen, all, I know what you think this morning. That's what's happened, the decline of the church from the early church. <coughs> right. I'm going to show you another wee thing. Here's this man, Paul, comes along. And I want to show you this morning in Acts 20. Right, Acts 20. I read on Friday night, Acts 20. We, I just want to pray. Father, we pray for all leaders and all pastors and everyone, deacon, and Father, all overseers. Father, we may pray that you'd open our eyes, that we would see your divine order. And Father, but just on us a fully committed heart and faithfulness that we would fully follow your programme from this moment on. And we thank you for it. Acts 20. Paul's coming along and he's ready to leave and he's saying, I'll never see you again here. And he says, wait, and he reads in verse 24, read on Friday night, verse 24. But none of these things move me, neither I count my life dear unto me, so that I may finish my course with joy and the ministry which I received of the Lord. Where did Paul receive his ministry? The Lord. Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Now we hear him go say here, I believe we're in the day of grace. I believe the gospel is the gospel of the grace of God. Now I'm just going to show you a couple of wee nuggets I learned years ago. Now if you go to Luke 16 verse 16, Most of us, when we go to church, I'll pick another Bible up. We go to church, and, now, and where we go is, well, we start at the book, and we start at the front, and we read right through, and we uh, engross ourselves in the law and the prophets. And somebody will come along and say, oh, you need to study the sacraments they've done in the Old Testament, and the great high priest, and all this stuff. So you study and embrace all this laws, and all this ceremonial laws and stuff. And then you come maybe and you start to read the New Testament. But you have a mindset of all the Old Testament. 
and that's I remember years ago as a young Christian man says to me you'd be far better go and read Mark and by the way then go and read Revelation I'm going to show you a wee thing go and hold this Bible up it's bravely worn Luke 16 verse 16 The law and the prophets were unto John. The law and the prophets were unto John the Baptist. When did the law and the prophets cease? John the Baptist. All the teaching of the law and the prophets were unto John the Baptist. Black and white there. Me in the next week, Brad. Since that time the kingdom of God is preached. So I'll just lift another bit the book. So the law and the prophets were unto John. Since that time, the kingdom of God has preached. Can I ask you a question? What dispensation are we in? Are we under the law and the prophets, or are we under the dispensation of the kingdom of God? Please, it's black and white here. When I'm reading this as a young Christian, the law, nobody ever told me this. The law and the prophets were unto John. Since that time the kingdom of God is preached and every man presses into it. We hear I'm going to say here. This is the day of grace. And this is the day of the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God was always there. It's a big, big subject. But listen, wait and see this I'm going to say here. Because I need another verse. You can find it. Matthew 11. Wait and see if I can just cross there and get it here. Matthew 11, verse 12 and 13. Matthew 11, verse 12. Matthew 11, I went to 12. Matthew 11, verse 12 and 13. Right. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the law and the prophets prophesied unto John. All the law and the prophets prophesied unto John. When the law, when the law prophesy, when they prophesy. Now a lot of our church today are still steeped in the doctrinal teachings of the law and the prophets. See this verse here I'm going to read to you. For all the prophets, not some of the prophets, all the prophets on the law prophesied unto John. Matthew 11, verse 13. I, I know, you know all, all the prophets on the law prophesied unto John. That teaching was for that dispensation. So now, we've got the kingdom of God. And we're not under the law and the prophets. We're under the kingdom. Now, go you to Acts chapter 20. Verse 24. And the ministry which I received of the Lord to testify of the grace of God. So we can go say here, we're in the kingdom. We're in the spirit. And by the way, we're in the grace of God for born again. Next verse. Now, now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom. What did Paul preach? Did Paul preached the law and the prophets. Can I read this again just to get. And now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God. What was Paul preaching? The kingdom of God. He wasn't preaching the law and the prophets. He was preaching the kingdom of God. Different dispensation. It was teaching not for this age. It was a teaching for the dispensation of the law and the prophets. Church, we need waiting up. Next verse. Wherefore I take you to record that this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God. What did Paul preach? All the counsel of God. 
And by the way, he preached the kingdom. And he preached all the counsel of God. Next verse. We hear this. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. So there must have been someone here, overseers, to oversee God's flock. Now we hear what he says here. Paul's leaving and it's breaking his heart for he's leaving the flock. And he's seeing something in people's hearts that want to destroy God's flock. Next verse. Take heed that unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers to feed the church of God. Now that's what our job is, to feed the church. Which he has purchased with his own blood. And I know that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not spraying the flock, also of your own selves. There's people sitting here. Paul says, among us. And they're just wanting to take disciples away. And destroy them. I'll read it again. I know this after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after them. Now that's what has been on in Paul's day. But it's getting worse in these days. Verse 31. Therefore watch and remain. Remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day. Now, brethren, I command you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all that are sanctified. Does Paul recommend you to the law and the prophets? No. But Paul preached all the counsel of God and Paul could have preached and all the law and the prophets. But there's a dispensation of grace now we're under the kingdom. Go to Acts 19. What's the timeline? I know what time we started out for the, with the problems. Acts 19. Here's Paul comes along here and, he, and very early in his ministry he goes and he starts to preach in Ephesus. Maybe. Acts 19. Now just when you're there, just go to verse 5. These Jews came along and they were converts of John the Baptist. And they come and they ask to get baptised again. But this man Paul seen something that none of them, nobody else has seen. He had an apostolic teaching and he seen the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And these men, Paul came and he, and he, verse 5, and when they heard this, they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. They weren't baptised in Jesus. Paul seen the revelation of the kingdom and the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what Paul taught and preached. That's why he preached all the counsel of God. He preached the teaching for this dispensation. I've lost a lot of churches because I speak, spoke there about the law and the prophets. They believe in keeping the law. Believe in keeping the prophets. Believe in keeping the Sabbath day. It was a different teaching for a different age. And what's this? Go try and... Let me show you this now. Right, and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came and they spake with tongues. And all the, all the men were about twelve, and he went into the synagogue, spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading things concerning the law and the prophets. The kingdom of God. What did he preach? The kingdom of God. He didn't preach the law and the prophets. He could have preached on it. But he moved on. We're in the dis day of the dispensation of grace. Next wee bit. But when divers were hardened, believed not, but spake evil of that way. What way? The way of the apostolic teaching of the church age. Okay. He departed from them and separated disciples as putting daily at the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years that so all the still in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus. What did they hear? They preached in the kingdom and they taught about the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have left all that. We don't preach about the Lord Jesus Christ. We preach about Jesus. But listen. And God wrote special... Right, right, I'll read this again. And this continued by the space of two years. So they started to argue in the synagogue, the Jews. So Paul took the disciples that were falling and he taught them and taught them in a school called the school of Tyrannus. 
And he taught these believers who were disciples of the Lord. And instilled in them the teaching of preaching the kingdom and the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. And verse 10. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Gentiles. And God wrought spiritual miracles by the hand of Paul, so that from the body... So that from his body were brought in handkerchiefs, sick handkerchiefs of aprons and diseases that departed from them, and the evil sp- spirits were out of them. And I just want to show you, then certain vagabond Jews actors took upon them to call over them, which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What was Paul preaching? The Lord Jesus Christ. Saying, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. See, they're still preaching Jesus. They have the revelation of the Lord Jesus. Now listen, all I'm just saying to you is the whole of Asia, these converts were that in that school went into Asia and the word of the Lord went into Asia from the school of Tyrannus. Could God not do spiritual miracles? He better believe he can. Now see this man Paul here. Paul had a revelation of Luke 16 verse 16 and Matthew 11 verse 12 and 13. The law and the prophets were unto John. All the prophets and prophesied unto John. And the law, after this is the kingdom, Paul come and tried to preach the kingdom. But he taught, he teached, uh, he, here's the word, he preached the kingdom, but he taught the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to show you this first, Acts 28. Now, that's the apostolic teaching of the faith that I've spoken. Acts 28. And maybe this morning, and here we'll realise, that's why we had so many problems this morning to start, because of that message. Church doesn't want this message. That is the message for the church. Acts 28, verse 31. I'll read verse 29 just to, get a, to see what it is. And when he had said, and when he said these things, when he said, when he had said these words, the Jews departed, and great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, and received all that came to him, preaching the kingdom. See, this morning, we preach the kingdom. We hear this, and we teach those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ. With all confidence, no man forbidden him. Now there's the message for us, the church. The apostolic teaching of the church age. Go back to 1 Timothy 3 verse 9 again. Too strong, too strong. That's the only message. 1 Timothy 3 verse 9. Holding the ministry of the faith. What is it? The teaching, preaching the kingdom. Teaching those things concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Now you see, overse- overseers, bishops, deacons, you must, to come into the role of this job, you must preach that too and hold that. If you don't want to hold that message, you can't go into that role of deacons or overseers because that will not preserve God's people. It will not protect them. It will not preserve God's message. And that's what's happened. There's been a decline. I just want to show you just how many of these verses in here just to show you this. So, could I ask you a question? I know it was a wee bit forthright and saying about the law and the prophets, but I believe in my heart. The law and the prophets. Child of God, if you're stuck in the law and the prophets, get into the new dispensation and start to study and see yourself the message of the kingdom. What's this? Way? And I'm going to finish here. Right. The three things God's servants must do and deacons and elders and everything, they must protect God's people. They must preserve God's message. And they must get everybody to follow God's program. Right, that's what's happened to the church. In these last days there will be a decline, a departing away from the faith. 
Right, I'm going to f I just want to show you a couple of verses here and I'm going to finish here. About this faith. Now, there's 16 verses here. And there's more. What do you mean? Check it says. And there's more. What's this? I'm just going to show you a couple of these. If you go to Jude verse 3 and 4. And uh, in Jude's day, there was a decline, a starting to be a decline in the church, moving away from the apostolic teaching. Jude verse 3 and 4. Beloved, when I gave all deadness to write unto you of the common salvation, it was need for me to write unto you, and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. In other words, you and I should be contending for this. So here's this one, contend. And the next verse is that, For there are certain men crept unawares who before of old ordained ungodliness, turning the grace of God. Remember we are in the grace of God. Turning the grace of God into deceptiveness. And we hear this, and denying the Lord God and the Lord Jesus Christ. That other teaching denies the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why they preach Jesus. They deny the Lord Jesus. They're totally against the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what we've got today. What's this now? Uh, I'm, do, I'm trying to pick my, there's a whole pile of them here. But go to Acts 6 verse 7. I want to finish in 2-3 minutes. Acts 6 verse 7. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. What were they obedient to? The faith. They weren't obedient to the law and the prophets. They were obedient to the preaching of the kingdom, and teaching those things concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the apostolic teaching of the church age, and these priests here were obedient to this. I just want to give you a couple of more here. There's, there's 15 in here. Sorry, 16. And probably more, if you look. What's this now? Right. I read it earlier on, but just go you to that one. 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. And you maybe understand now why there's a falling away. The falling away is to part from the spiritual teaching of the doctrinal age of the apostle, apostles' doctrine, First Timothy four verse one. Now the Spirit speaks expressly, expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to these seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I'll read two more, maybe. First Timothy six verse twenty one. So you and I don't realise this, but we the church are maybe doing this today. For I'll go first Timothy five verse eight and first Timothy. 7. If any if any man provide not for his own, especially for his own household, he had denied the faith. See that's the teaching of that, but you and I are to look after our own household. You and I to protect each other. You and I to do this. You can deny the faith, and that's what people are doing. But first Timothy six verse twenty one. Which some professing have erred concerning the faith. So you can err away from the teaching, and that's what's happened to the church. I'm giving you quite verses, there are quite a number of verses. You know this here, if you read one more in Second Timothy three and one in Second Timothy four, I'm finished. Second Timothy three verse eight. Now as James and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Why? We're serving, we're doing all this. I've got to ask you a question. What are you like concerning the faith? Now, these men did not, or did not follow, but listened, denied, and spoke against these people that believed in the apostolic teaching of the church age. Second Timothy 4 verse 7. Here's a man here, he's ready to go home, finished everything, and he says this, Verse 6, I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure at his hand. Now, see when you read these here, you may get a revelation. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course and I have kept the faith. 
the faith, the apostolic teaching and revelation the Lord graced me in Romans 1 verse 5. I've kept this and I've passed it on. Now what was the teaching for the church? Okay. I said I wouldn't read them. Titus 1 verse 13. Titus 1 verse 13. You and I need to get a revelation of the apostolic teaching for God wants you and I to be faithful to that message. And then God is going to promote you to go forth and be stewards of his message. First Titus 1 verse 13 This witness is true, we're all for them sharply that they may be found sound in the faith. See this morning, I know what you may think. Think of me. But I tell you this, I'm going to finish here. God... I can only say what God says to me, Wally, I want you to protect God's people. And I want you to preserve my message. And Father, and we are this, I want you to point people to follow God's program. I see this morning, there's two things, preaching the kingdom and teaching those things concerning Jesus Christ. That's what Paul lived his life with. See this morning, I preach the kingdom and I teach those things concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the key to the whole thing. Listen, should no follow? Should church not follow? The church has got the message. In a common day, they're responsible to what they do with the message. But we still must preach the message. Just want to pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Father, this morning we just pray for everyone. For leaders, pastors and everyone. Father, may we be restored back to the revelation of the teaching of the church age and we may we be found faithful in the church of your mysteries fire especially the mystery of the faith and we commit this all to you Jesus could say the spirit of the Lord is upon him I just want to pray the spirit of the Lord is upon me and we, I command healing and wholeness and fullness and completeness to everyone pray for every home Father I pray that that this word of discouragement would remove from each one of our lives an encouragement to realise the Lord is coming back. And Father, we thank you for the glorious future we have. And we thank you for this now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.